mailbag <laughs> time, where are we jumping to first? Okay. Which group do you think will be most improved as a unit this season? Season running backs or wide receivers? Oh, man. That's a hard question because Trey Palmer did so much a year ago. And, you know, there were moments with Anthony Grant. But I think it, I think running back top to bottom will be more consistent. Yeah, I mean, I think this, that's the most proven commodities or at least more known commodities. The running backs? Uh, I think so. So do they need to improve as much? Well, they didn't finish strong. They started strong, and then Anthony Grant kind of got yeah. overused. So my, my point was that you got guys that you think are going to be good, but you know, like Grant is by far <laughs> the most productive out of those, and he, like Sean said, fizzled out. So that's kind of how I'm going. But then wide receiver. fizzle out. Yeah, I think so. Okay. We made comments about how his legs look tired yeah, at the did. end of the year just because he didn't have that number two right. after A.J. Allen went down. So I guess to okay. that question – I think with the need for the running game to <clears throat> be more productive and consistent, that that I'm going to say. Okay, right you you persuaded me. I'm going to. I guess I say running back. I do think though the receiver position could be more diverse or just more more guys contributing than we saw a year ago. Yes. I mean, it was way way more. It was way one. I mean, think about the Purdue game. Right. Yeah. It was great to watch Trey Palmer, but you know, Nobody not much else. else was going on. Right. They leaned hard on Palmer. Will they lean hard on anybody like they leaned on him? Maybe Billy Kemp, but it'll look a lot different because Billy Kemp is underneath a, routes. Yeah, he isn't a he isn't a field stretcher like Palmer. He can More volume. Yeah, he's a volume guy and he can stretch the field. I don't want to say he can't because he, he catches balls over his shoulder on film at Virginia, but no, he's not that he's not no, he don't run he doesn't run like Trey Palmer. Nobody on the roster does. You win games off eight yard catches on third and seven. And I think Billy Kemp will be good at those plays. Okay. All right. What do you got next, Ab? Okay. What game do you give Nebraska the biggest percentage chance to win and the biggest percent chance to lose? Say Big Ten. Big yeah, Ten. Big Ten. Oh, I thought Louisiana Tech. Okay. Yeah. Big Ten. That's the and let's take Michigan out of the, the equation. Yeah. I think, I think we'd think all that, say Michigan. Yeah. Okay. okay, so in the Big Ten, the I'll say Purdue for the best chance to Whoa, win. Really? They, they, they well, I know in the chat, the, in the chat, the guy said, uh, "Take out Northwestern for wins and yeah. take out Michigan for losses." So, okay, let's narrow it down even further. I'll say Purdue. All right, you um, saying Purdue? I mean, they lost their coach. I'm, I'm with Sean. I think Purdue's the most winnable game on this. They side. lost a ton of players. I mean, I just read an article yeah, that they I'm, added two I'm... transfer portal tackles from an NAIA school. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they yeah. got some issues. They, they I, need I, Hudson Card to be like Tom Brady for them to have a chance. I, I hate – yeah, and th I, I still scratch my head over the choice of Ryan Walters as head coach. Nothing against him, but, I mean, come on. Now, I grudgingly I grudgingly have to agree with both of you. I guess it's Purdue. It's a Hard, tough schedule. That's a tough schedule. Man. Hardest game to win, I'm going to say at Wisconsin, November 18th yeah. in Madison. Yep. Yeah. That's what I said on the chat. Illinois is up there. Yeah. I, I, my picks Wisconsin as well, but the fact that it's a Friday night coming off yeah. Michigan. Oh, yeah. Illinois is just tough. They're a tough team. To they they beat you. Mm -hmm. What about Minnesota? Yeah. Uh, it's close. Yeah. But it's, it's, it's close. Yeah. They, they have the advantage of the unknown. So there's just that element that no other game they're going to have that. So just degree of difficulty having to play Illinois and their physical style coming off that Michigan game on a short week. That's, that's just a tough draw. You know, what's going to be unique about that opener. Both teams will huddle Minnesota yeah. and Nebraska will huddle. So that happen very often. Anymore. The greatest percentage win is Purdue. The reason I say it now, some people are going to say, Oh, simple saying that the schedule's tough. No, it's not. Yeah. It, the big 10 schedule's tough. I, I, if that's the greatest percentage win, I guess, other than Northwestern, Purdue, uh, Purdue's beat you, beat, beat you last year. I mean, I, I still think they're going to be different. After those two games, what would be the next one? I mean, would it be Maryland? <laughs> I guess Maryland, but Maryland but scares you because of their skill. You and get Maryland and their quarterback. You get them in Lincoln the week after they play Penn State. That helps a lot. That's a, I mean, so the timing of that game, I do think Michigan State, it's early, but. You know they're they're not as good. I mean that receiver they lost. Mm -hmm. He has a second round grade. Oh boy, Michigan State lost a starting corner, starting receiver, and their starting quarterback. quarterback. Yeah, Peyton Thorne. What do you got next? Abby? Okay, every team in the West has some major holes to fill. Would it surprise you if Nebraska was in the running with two weeks to go in November? In the running to win the West, they got to win the Minnesota game to be in the running. I think. Okay, I think if they can win that game early. 
then it's like you're ahead on your monthly bills, you know, you, <laughs> but if you lose that game early, you're just going to feel like you're in the hole the whole year. Yeah. Yeah. And hmm. Nebraska has not gotten ahead in the big 10 since the last time they went to a bowl game. Really? I really can't disagree with you. I don't like to do that. I don't like to put so much. I, I I'm always resistant of putting so much stock in one game that it affects your season. I just like to think that, that teams are more, are mentally tougher than that, that they can lose a game at Minnesota and come back and be okay. But you're at the end of the day, Sean, this program is kind of, it's shown it's that flimsy. That, it's pretty flimsy. Yeah. I mean, the Northwestern game last year, we all set in the Illinois game the year before. I mean, you think about yes. four, three straight years yeah. opening with big 10 opponents in the Western division, yeah. Nebraska's lost both those games. They were favored by the way, in both those games. Yeah, and, and, and you can't say that that, Loss at Northwestern in Ireland didn't affect him. It oh affected him. God, Changed it the whole season. Him. Yeah, it affected him. It did. I'll never forget. I, I mean, I'll never forget running into Chenander outside the stadium the Tuesday after we got back from Ireland, and the fear the, the fear in his eye was real. It I mean, was they about real. lost to North Dakota. Yeah. I mean, they ended up making it look better, but that game was a close to being a loss. It was yeah. real. I asked him, so you guys all right? You know, you, you got it? <laughs> he didn't really. The answer wasn't like, I remember, I remember talking to Sean after. I was like, I walked away from that going, I think they could be in trouble, Sean. They could, I think they could be <laughs> Kind in of trouble. a deer. He just kind of had a deer yeah. in the headlights. Yeah. yeah. He knew. Yeah. What do you got Yeah, he knew. That's right. What do you got next, Abby? Okay, so this question is from Twitter. The original question was, if there was one thing that had to happen for the Huskers to win eight games, what would it be? Ooh, so what if we just eight change games. it to like the top three things? Because that might be easier. Hmm. A 4 no start. Okay. I think that's, that goes answer. back to your point. Beat yeah. Minnesota. Yeah. Good beat thing. Minnesota changes everything. Nebraska hasn't won three games in a row since 2016 as a football program. Mm -hmm. I was thinking more granular, like what has to happen in turn on the field. What, I mean, does Sims have to complete 60%? He's got to stay healthy. Sims has to stay healthy and raise his completion percentage and cut down on on interceptions. That's what I would say. The offensive line has to take yeah, a step. That might be the big, that might be the one. I mean, that might be the more. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I put that above. Right. I think kicker too. I mean, they got to make sure they have a kick. I mean, you you, you have it's to gonna come down to it, just you know, the special teams in general. Special teams in general. Like they're not good enough to to not have a good kicker and win. Like those points in these got kinds of games make the difference. Oh, and yeah. Whether it's Alvano or Bleak Road, I think it's going to be Alvano, but obviously they'll, they'll, that will play out. No doubt. Yeah, and Buccini's big in the conversation too. I mean, that really, if you're a Nebraska fan, you take a lot of comfort in having a, a consistent so the, punter that can change the field. The line right, has to be better. Sims has to stay healthy, and the special teams need to be good. All that's year. good. Yeah, those are good ones. Final question. Okay, so we're currently in the middle of camp season right now. So what is the best player – that you discovered during a camp or kind of maybe brought to the light that wasn't on the radar yet? I mean, there are several, like early in my career, Josh Freeman, for example, when he came to Nebraska's camp, okay, I created his profile and, you know, covered him, wrote the first articles back at Rivals. But two that really wow. jump out to me, Joe Burrow, um, I created his Rivals profile page, checked off his first offer to Ohio U, where his father was a coach. Really? And – you know, helped him kind of get into the initial one of the rivals camps as a sophomore. Where was that? What? Where was the camp? Um, Do you remember? Well, he came to Nebraska, but just when he, he, you know, when he was coming out of high school, like we, we got him into the rivals camp and it was in Cleveland or Cincinnati. Okay. That's what um, I was wondering. But the one in Lincoln that still jumps out to me is Gabe Karimi. Um, ended up being an all American offensive lineman at the University of Wisconsin. Um, got he he won the Outland Trophy, mm -hmm. and he came to Nebraska's camp. Did not have a rivals profile at that time when I was working on rivals. So I created the profile for the eventual gotcha. Outland Trophy winner. Yeah, and next thing you know, Nebraska never offered, which is still bizarre to me. It was Bill Callahan, Kevin Cosgrove, but Cosgrove actually knew that. Barry would offer this guy and he'd go play for Barry. Okay. Um, years later, I talked to his family at the Outland Dinner in Omaha. And the mom said, he goes, Nebraska still should have offered. Like we we would have maybe considered it back then. Mm. Um, but he was he was from like Cottage Grove, Wisconsin. Like yeah. so, you know, one of those that was literally where he's from. I believe it was Cottage Grove or something like that, Wisconsin. In fact, I'm gonna look that up. Check it out. Check it um, out. 
Manona, Gro- Man- Man- Manona Grove. Manona Grove. Okay. I about got that right, though. That was pretty good. Got the Grove. Yeah. So I'll never forget. It was a Friday night lights camp. Not the big one with like Micah Parsons, but oh, okay. down the road, there was this tight end from Beatrice that, you know, was on Nebraska's radar. Uh, hadn't had an offer yet. His name's Cam Jurgens, And he was far and away. He was a freshman. The best player at that camp. Was yes. He? he was a freshman. Yeah. Just catching everything in sight. Like really? just one-on-one drills. Just like look like Dallas Clark out there. So uh, I think that night is when he got the offer. It's like he played so well at that camp. And everybody was just watching him. It was like, holy cow, this guy's so good. And he ended up getting his Nebraska offer that night committed eventually shortly after he was competitive like when he like we'd have those rivals camps and i would be in charge of getting the nebraska kids to go back then and then there was the five-star challenge he really wanted to be a part of the five-star challenge the camp was in st louis he threw state shot and disc in omaha on friday saturday Mm -hmm. and he skipped out on the medal ceremony on saturday to get in this car to get to st louis for the next morning Wow. Wow. I mean, that, that's how yeah. driven he was. And he, he qualified to go to the challenge that year in Indianapolis. But he, I mean, he was a very motivated. I mean, that's why he's making a lot of money playing the game of football. Yeah. Well, no, no doubt. 100. Oh, I, I needed 100. 100. I about nailed 100. it. All right. What do you sip? No, I don't have, I haven't, I don't have enough camp experience to, to, to do this. I just don't. I'm still new in the camp scene. I haven't covered enough of them. Um, I'm hoping Will Anderson. Okay. I'm hoping Will Anderson turns out to be a tell me like star. your first vision story of like D'Angelo Evans because <sighs> okay it wasn't camp though I don't think but I mean when he came in as a freshman I'm talking like when he got to Nebraska like when you saw like a the guy I remember most on that conversation is Amon Green now I remember that vividly it was strange it was strange is because Frank was letting us go out. Uh, we were really standing out on the practice field that day. I mean, there's a just a there's only a few guys covering covering at that time, and we're on those grass practice fields um, where the Cook Pavilion is kind of out in that area. And I'll, I'll always remember when they stuck him with the ones. I'm on. I was like, look at I'm on Green is with the ones, and he looked. He just looked fabulous, like a thoroughbred. Yeah, I mean, it was like, yeah, well, he, yeah, he, he definitely looks the part, and look at him. He's, he can do this. So that's what I, that's the one I always remember. What I remember about D'Angelo Evans distinctly, and I don't I don't want to disparage the man, but there was a time he got hurt and he he, he said, come down to Wichita, I'm on my rehab, come down and do a story on me. Um so I did, and I got to the he said, meet me at this high school track. And he said, You'll see, I'm training really hard and I'm gonna be back this year. And I got it was a really awkward situation. I got down there and he was overweight and I, and I really didn't know what to do. I, I mean, I just kind of wrote the story anyway, but he didn't look good. <laughs> it didn't look like D'Angelo Evans that we knew, you know, he just, he ballooned up. How do I look? You look great. That <laughs> yeah, was one of those deals. And he, when he, and, 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 and that's <laughs> simple. And, yeah. There he is. Oh my that's God. That's the man. In that season, in that season, he wasn't as good. I mean, he just wasn't as good. He, he had a hard time getting back. Was that 98 or 99? Probably 99, I believe. Well, then 99, he left. Yeah. I yeah. did a uh, Where That's Are They? That's right. I did a Where Are They Now on D'Angelo, and this has been like 010-ish. Uh-huh. 2010. He ended up going to Emporia State. That's right. He did go um, to Emporia State. And he said that he really regretted like just how you know impulsive he decided, you know, the way he left the program at that moment. Just yeah. Kind of, it was a tough deal. I mean, because it was yeah. in the middle of the season. He, you know, he had a bad knee injury, and it just didn't. He didn't come back. From I thought he had a sports hernia too. Oh, Could have been that. Could have been. I thought it was a sports like the, you know, the I, Sean. I think you're probably right. The athletic pubitis. Yeah, I think he had that little deal. Because you go back to the Big Twelve championship game in '96. Oh, he's fabulous. He was better in that game than Ricky Williams and Priest oh, Holmes just, and Amon Green. Yeah, I remember the Kansas State game. He was he had a huge game at Kansas State. He was. He just looked like he'd be one of the best running backs Nebraska's ever had. And then, then got that injury, ballooned up, and wasn't the same guy. Wasn't the same guy. Lost quickness. 